Good morning. A warm welcome to St Matt's Leeds Online. My name's Nick. I'm going to be leading the service today. Um, hope you've been enjoying the, uh, the heat wave this week. Um, maybe you're not a fan of the heat. I can sort of just hear the, the faint echoes of a, an ice cream van out in the distance, which I'm quite enjoying. But it's probably most likely you're watching this on Sunday and it's going to be like back down to 12 degrees and rainy or something. So my apologies. Um, but I'm enjoying, the, I'm enjoying it in the moment right now. Um, if you're new, you're particularly welcome. If you're, you know, you've been just checking out a few of these, it's been great to have you join us and, and please get in touch because we'd love to connect with you. Today, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be worshipping, we're going to be praying, we're going to be listening to James, who's going to speak to us on the next of our Psalms. Um, and uh, But before we do that, there's also been, this week has been marked, hasn't it, by the huge changes announced in terms of the next phase of emerging from lockdown. And I, I guess I just wonder at the outset, as you come to worship today, how you're feeling, how how that's made you feel, perhaps excited, perhaps anxious, um, unsettled, not sure. And it seems to me that in the midst of all this, one of the things I'm reminded of is just the gift of prayer, the gift of being able to come to a father in heaven who's listening, who cares, who knows, who answers, who, who provides and so what we're going to do now, we're going to listen to a few people who were involved in Thy Kingdom Come a few weeks ago, a week of prayer, 10 days of, of prayer, just to share a little bit about how God impacted them through that week as a way to just awaken our hearts to the wonderful reality that we, we live in relationship with the Heavenly Father. So let's, let's listen to them and, uh, and, and respond in, in worship. Enjoy the opportunity to gather with people um, as we haven't been able to physically but to gather on zoom um, and to break out into small groups and pray alongside other people it was such an encouragement uh, to be able to do that I think while this year uh, things felt uh, very limited and there were certainly some challenges as we were thinking about what it would be like to pray for God's kingdom to come as a church I think there have also been huge opportunities. For me, I think the main thing was really coming back to basics and just recognising the real power in praying uh, for more of God's kingdom to come and doing that with other people. So a real highlight was the evening prayer uh, at a time where I haven't been able to, to gather with other people uh, very much to pray. Um, to be praying for so many different aspects of, of life and things that are going on at the, in the world at the moment with other people was just absolutely brilliant. I was actually quite apprehensive um, about the kingdom come being from home and being from our different houses this year, um, thinking that it was going to be really difficult not being together in the same space. Um, but actually it was totally not that at all. Um, and I found it massively helpful to just sort of get back to basics um, and it felt quite raw just being able to pray and spend the majority of the time just literally being together and praying. It was great. Uh, quite good. I did bottle out on telling everybody. So not everybody knew I was praying for them. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good thing to do and it's a good conversation starter, <laughs> uh, asking people to pray for them. I think people appreciate it as well. I found them praying for five challenge a challenge um, and, it, and it forced me to kind of push myself but I was really surprised at the response that I got and the opportunities for conversations uh, with some of my friends that I that I haven't had before. found this year I was really um, provoked to pray big prayers, finding in the midst of a pandemic feeling a little bit limited in what I'm able to do about something and so trusting God that He is big enough to uh, intervene, that He cares enough to hear our cries and respond to them in big ways. Um, so I was really provoked to pray really big prayers this year. I think God's um kind of spoke to me about how the fact that God doesn't change. Our situations have really changed at the moment. It's all a bit potty. Um, but the fact is God is the same 
Um, he wants to hear from us. He's interested in our lives and he wants to do stuff in them. And so praying about it is a good, a good thing we can do. And the situation at the moment, it is, um, can seem a bit out of our control, but it's not out of God's control. God knows what he's doing in it all. And it's good to pray about it and bring our concerns to him. So yes, I'll be back next year. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Father, thank you for the gift of prayer and thank you for the way that you're you're shaping us into a people of, of prayer, people of intimacy with our Father in heaven. Father, we need you to help keep guiding us down that path. It can feel big and, and, and confusing at times and, uh, and hard at times, but Father, there's nothing, nothing more amazing and and delightful than to be in the presence of the one who made us and, and who loves us, to be in that secret place in our hearts. So Father, would you open us up now? Open up our hearts, open up the secret place within us where we can be intimate with you, where we can share with you all that we are and where we can respond to the majesty and glory and, and love that you show to us. Father, lead us as we worship you. We pray in Jesus' name. The dark try to hide and steal you away. Death try to keep inside of the grave. Love. You cannot be stopped When we cried for feet You tore them both 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say.
So here we are in the Glebe land and um, just been inspired by these guys who are building our, our fire pit and um, Dave here who's laying the bricks um, bricks around it and it just got me thinking um, before we move on from, from our worship into listening to James actually and um, just, just to pause and reflect actually how have I been building my life this week? Who, what have I built my life on? What, what have I been using to build my life this week? Have I paid attention? Have I been careful to build my life on Jesus? Have I been careful to to build well with the, all the gifts and tools and skills and opportunities that God's given me this week? So let's just take a moment to, to pause and to just reflect actually, God, how's my building been this week? where we've maybe been careless or unthinking or we've sort of drifted this week we haven't really been building deliberately our lives on Jesus and building our lives as disciples let's just confess that and, and, and acknowledge that before God Father thank you that you give us such a, a strong foundation to build on in Jesus and such an incredible hope and um, and you give us all the skills and tools and gifts that we need, Father, um, by your spirit and, 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 and in one another to help us with our, our building exercise of building our lives on you, Jesus. So, so Father, please, please help us to, to turn back to you where we've maybe drifted, where we've been careless in our lives this week, where we've not been deliberate actually in living the kind of lives that, that you call us to in your kingdom. Father, forgive us and turn us back to you. And as we listen to James now, please continue to shape and build our lives on the incredible foundation of Jesus and, and his love and his, his acceptance, his forgiveness and, and his call to become a people holy and, and glorious for him. Father, we commit ourselves to you afresh this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. On the birthday of each of my three kids, I try and take some time out, usually early in the morning, to spend some time thanking God for a, another year in their life. But I also use that time, as many of you have heard me talk about before, to write each of them a letter. And into these letters goes a whole variety of different things, but, but usually I spend some time, I guess, naming some of the things that I've seen grow in them over the, the last year and just encouraging them in that, naming things that I take pleasure in. I also put into the letter things that I see God doing, things that I can see, if you like, God's fingerprints on them that I want to encourage them to, to really push into and enjoy and receive from God. But also I tend to put into these letters things that I see them battling with or things that I feel they're going to hit further down the road that could be difficult for them to encourage them through those moments. The hope is that by the time they get to being 18 or 21, maybe they'll receive like a whole chunk of letters from their dad, which I hope they'll treasure. My, my big fear is they'll read them and go, oh, dad, these are like hideously boring, but we'll leap that bridge when we come to it. The, the reason I mention it is because Psalm 121, which we're in today, reads a little bit like that. No, it's not a letter, it's a song, a song of ascent that would have been sung by the people of God on their journey up to Jerusalem. But you get this kind of feel that the, the song is written by a wise old traveler who's made the journey a few times. And he begins by saying, this is how I've lived my life. But then he kind of turns his attention to these maybe younger travelers who have not made the journey as many times as him. And he kind of sings over them the truths of the difficulties they'll face. He says that the road you're gonna walk with me is difficult. But then he also sings over them the fact that God will be with them every step of the way. This psalm is incredibly real. It doesn't sort of pretend it's all going to be great, but it also promises that God will be in the midst of that. Now, how do we therefore get into Psalm 121? Well, you're going to think I'm mad, but here's what I've decided to do. I've taken this idea of the letters that I've been writing to my children, and I've written myself a letter or what I've done is I've written as the 43 year old me to my 18 year old self as I was setting off 
on a journey of following Jesus. I'm not setting myself up as some great wise traveler, but I've done it a few more times than my 18 year old self. And so I've taken the, the reality and the promises of God in Psalm 121, used that as the boundaries and written a letter to myself. I hope as you listen to this, that you're not bored. I hope as you listen to this, that it gets you thinking, what, what would you say to yourself as you set off following Jesus? Based in Psalm 121, maybe as you listen to this letter, you realise that actually you need to listen to the things that the psalm is speaking of now. Truth be told, I'm also kind of speaking to myself when I've written this letter, as in speaking to myself now. And I hope above all else that we can sit in Psalm 121, marinate in it, and then have a conversation with God about the things that float to the surface. Where we're heading, I hope, is praying for one another. Let's give it a whirl. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Remember, this is the wise old traveller. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now the wise old traveller sings to his younger travellers and sings over them, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Now, go easy with me on this, because you, you'd be surprised how hard it is to write a letter to yourself. Dear James, that's how I decided to start. Responding to Jesus and choosing to seek the kingdom of God is the best decision you ever made. I know that you're finding the first few weeks as a disciple exhilarating. And as I write to you more than 20 years on, know that your older self still has a passion for Jesus that burns deep. But the road has not been easy. It's not going to be easy. And in many ways, I want to prepare you for that. The journey is totally safe because Jesus will be with you every step of the way. It's a road marked by joy. But James, the road is also genuinely dangerous because this world isn't how it should be. It's a road marked with sorrow. Balancing these two truths makes life complicated, frustrating and painful. The challenge we face as followers of Jesus is to embrace both sides of the road, but with him. So James, lift up your eyes. The Lord is your guardian and he's your helper. Lift up your eyes. The Lord is your shade, your shield. Whether you feel like it or not, whether you actually want to or not, when the sun is shining or it's pouring down with rain, whether life is going well or feels like a total disaster in all seasons of this journey, James, lift up your eyes. The Lord watches over you every step of the way. Now, there are a number of challenges I want you to know about, and I've stolen them from this psalm. I name them because none of us are exempt from them, and so that you can spot them. Yes, you guessed it. You can lift up your eyes when you spot them. The first is this. The ground we walk upon as we follow is slippy, so tread thoughtfully, graciously and deliberately. As you journey, there will be many temptations, alternative paths, distractions that can easily trip you up. You will slip and fall and wonder if you can ever get back. You will wonder if you can ever pick yourself up again. I'm writing to you as a 43-year-old man who has made an art out of choosing wrong paths. But in all of this, I have learned and experienced that you can't outrun God's grace. There is always a way back, James. James, find people who you can confess your sins to, share your temptations with and face your many slippings with so that they can speak grace to you and challenge you. Listen to the wisdom of the psalm. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your helper, your guardian. Go to him with this stuff. Learn to be led by Jesus. Get used to making decisions with him and not just decisions based on what you think is right or what your family has always done or what the world or the church says you should do. His gaze is always on you. He doesn't fall asleep on the job. So lift up your eyes 
to meet his gaze and follow. Second bit of advice is this. The road we walk along is long and wears down even the toughest campaigners. You need to know you don't have the strength to do this on your own, even if you think you do. Listen to the psalm. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Imagine an army, James, with shields in their left hands protecting them. Feel safe, but their right hand side is vulnerable and weak. It's a picture of a people who could easily be worn down by the relentless heat of the day and the dangers of the night. Could easily get tired and give up because of the comings and goings of life. All of us have vulnerable parts, chinks in our armour. All of us will face challenges that will come at us, blindside us in ways that will remind us of our frailty. You will get tired. You will face times in your life when the pains and sorrows feel just too big to bear. Find friends to journey with. They're rare and precious. Friends to grieve with, cry with, as well as laugh with. People who will re-envision you, speak of Jesus with you. We all need team. Don't use your brokenness, your pain and frustrations as an excuse to hurt others. They're not. Don't see the many wrongs of this world as evidence that God has fallen asleep at the wheel. He hasn't. Know that everyone struggles, even those who hide it well. So be kind to yourself and be kind to others, James. Share the chinks in your armour with the Lord. Name them before him. Ask him daily to stand at your right hand and shelter you. Psalm 121 promises this. So claim it. Rest in it. Trust him. His gaze is always on you. He doesn't fall asleep on the job. Whatever the season, lift up your eyes to meet his gaze. James, my third bit of advice is this. The road we walk has predators on it. We are in a spiritual battle. This doesn't mean that you can blame everything on the devil. You'll try this. But equally, don't be silly enough to think he's not out to trip you up. You'll think that too. He is. Psalm 121 would have been sung as people journeyed through dangerous mountains, James. A journey worth taking because of the destination, but a journey marked by wild animals and bandits out for blood. Sadly, life has not changed that much. The battles are not as visible, but they are just as violent and costly. There will be attacks on you that seem that are unrelenting. There will be attacks on the people you love and the church that you are part of that seem unrelenting. James, stay alert and watchful. Put on the whole armour of God, even when you don't think you need to. It's in those moments that you need to the most. When you come under spiritual attack to what you have learned through years on a rugby pitch, go and stand behind someone bigger than you. Stand behind Jesus. It's really that simple. You don't have to be strong, so stop faking it. He's the maker of heaven and earth. He's your guardian. With him you are safe, the psalm says. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Lift up your eyes to meet his gaze. Now, I realise, James, that this letter is long and your attention span short. I'm nearing the end, but my fourth bit of advice is a big one. It's important. So much of the journey of following Jesus is about being shaped to be like him. Jesus' vision for his followers was of lots of mini-me's. Buy into that vision, but know that he is not the only one shaping you. The world you journey through is in the formation business, and he's very good at it. In this psalm, the mountains would have been covered with other gods who would have been offering strength, protection, and guidance, happiness to every passerby. Powerful distractions offering alternative and attractive ways of living. Perhaps on the surface, even more attractive ways of living than a trek through the mountain with God's people. The psalmist looks up to the mountain, sees loads of options but makes the right choice. He chooses the creator and sustainer of the world as his guardian. Nothing much has changed. The same challenges and choices remain on a daily basis. We humans are idol factories. We create and choose other gods and other guardians all the time. Things, people, ideas, stuff that we think 
will make us and others be better, feel better, live better, be more safe, be more secure, be more popular, be more in control, stay awake because they lie. They lie. Be careful with the gods of money, sex, power, relationships. Don't turn your children into your gods. Exercise, physical appearance, work, success, apathy, I could go on. All can easily become replacement saviors, fake guardians and overbearing lords rather than him. Be careful what you spend your time on. When you look around, continue, always choose the creator as your guardian and the one who shapes you not anything he has created or anything you create. Jesus is the only one worth letting shape you. He's the only God who loves you and serves you. All the other gods will enslave you. Lift up your eyes to meet his gaze. So I end with this. I lift up my eyes, James, is a statement of actually doing something, not just the lyric of this psalm or song. Make it your declaration of passion for God. I lift up my eyes. Make it your declaration of the choices you make in life. I lift up my eyes. Make it your statement that speaks of your real prayer life, not theoretical prayer life. I lift up my eyes. Memorize it. It's not really that long. Then live it. Remember, his gaze is always on you. His gaze of love and care. He will never fall asleep on the job. Lift up your eyes to meet his gaze. Love, James. So what I want us to do now is, is a bit different. You know, let me be honest with you. One of the things that I really miss about being physically together is prayer ministry. To pray with somebody when you want to give thanks, to Pray with somebody when you've got stuff coming up at work that you just want God to be involved in. To pray for stuff when you're really on your knees and you want someone to lay hands on you and bless you, all of that kind of stuff. I really miss it. So we're going to give it a whirl online, okay? But before we do, two streets we're praying for, Haddon Avenue and Haddon Place. Haddon Avenue and Haddon Place. Let's pray for all the people who live there. Father, we just want to bless everybody who calls Haddon Avenue and Haddon Place home. Lord, would you bless them? Would you make your face to shine upon them? Would you be keeping them safe? Father, we would love to see people living on those streets awaken to you. Would you be speaking to them in dreams? Would you be providing us with opportunities to share our faith? Lord, bless them, we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. Four questions I want us to ask. The four questions, and they'll come up on the screen in a minute. What causes you to slip? Where are you struggling at the moment, if you are? Are you in a spiritual battle? The fourth question, what are the gods of your life that shape you? Those are the four questions. Now, what I want us to do is spend a bit of time talking with God for ourselves. Kind of name it. Imagine putting it out in your hands. Go, this is the stuff. Uh, the, the, these are my answers to the four questions. Then when we've done this, onto the screen will come a little kind of reminder, say, right, now go. And what we're going to do is not pray for ourselves. We've named that stuff before God. We're going to pray for one another. So we're then going to spend a minute or two asking for God's Holy Spirit to fill every single one of us, asking for God to meet us in everybody's answers to those questions, asking God to help those who are slipping, those who are struggling, those who are in a spiritual battle. We're going to prayer minister to one another live, although not physically together. And I'm pretty sure it works the same way as prayer ministry together. So a bit of time to reflect on these four questions and talk to God, and then a bit of time to prayer minister. I think that works. Let's go. Let's pray.
my hopes and fears are in your hand. I'm in your hand. Where you go, I'll go. Show me the way. Every step I take, be now my guide. God on my side. Forever 
So before we finish with uh, some notices, I'm just going to leave a bit of space to allow us a bit of time to just see if there's anything else we want to say to God at, at this moment in time. Any, any way we're wanting to respond to something we've heard or sensed this morning. Just a bit of, of space that I'm going to pray. Lead us in the Lord's Prayer and the words will appear on the screen. Let's say these words together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So just a few notices to finish with. Um, first of all, as I said at the start of the service, there have been these big changes announced by the government, and one of which is that church, churches will be allowed to hold social distance and, and smaller services from the 4th of July. Now, this is something that we're, we, we knew was coming and we, we've been making um, some tentative plans and, and we're discussing those with the PCC at the moment. So um, just to reassure you, that's happening in the background and, um, and just thank you for your patience in the meantime. You'll appreciate we, we can't and we don't want to rush into this, but we're thinking about it and we're, we're planning. So we'll, we'll update you as, as and when we have a bit more clarity on that. And um, in the meantime, obviously, Private prayer uh, is available in the church in these two slots, these two windows we've got on a Thursday morning, 10 till 12, and a Sunday afternoon, 3 till 5, um, slots starting on the hour. Um, you, we invite you to book in online so that we can just make sure we can manage numbers. Um, but yeah, we'd love you to, to come down if, if that would be helpful to get out of your house and actually be in another building to pray um, rather than in your kitchen or your, your living room and, and just carve up some space to, to be in the quiet and to, to spend some time with God. So yeah, I encourage you to, to make use of that. Um, and lastly, just to say a massive thank you to Scott for his epic cycle ride. Now, Scott has raised, he's absolutely smashed his target of fundraising for um, for the community support project that we've got going on here at St. Matt's. Um, he's, last time I checked, around £850, which is incredible. So just a huge thank you to Scott for putting himself out there for for raising money for this um, incredible work that's going on and and thank you to you guys who, who have been giving. Um, yeah, it's, it's such an amazing um, amazing thing he's done and, and a great amount of money that's been raised which, which we put to great use, so, so thank you. And we're gonna hear from Scott now, in fact, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about um, what he was doing. Hi, I'm Scott Preston. I did a sponsored bike ride up the Air Valley towpath for church for the COVID support team to raise a bit of money. So for, because church, church has helped me get my life back and I just want to put a little bit back in when I can and where I can, you know what I mean? And my way of saying thank you. Very hard, it was tiring. But very good, very good to see the people at the end and the halfway mark. And what made it possible, what made it more comfortable is knowing all the people that donated and helped me through it, and which is brilliant. Without them, it wouldn't have been possible, really, would it? And I'd like to thank each and every one of the sponsors for making this possible and surpassing the 
150 pounds target. Now we're going to finish with the, the blessing, but a shorter blessing this week because I also want to commission us. Now commissioning is something that the Anglican liturgy sort of traditionally does often. It, 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 we're commissioned, we're sent out, if you like, after the service as, as missionaries, as servants of Jesus, as followers of the way. So, um, so hear these words as, as, as words to send us out um, as his ambassadors in the world. But you men and women of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And let's say together uh, the blessing over one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a good week. God bless.